Okay, this is the legs, and maybe I can squeeze the face in there, but if not, at least just the legs. <laughs> okay, for his legs, I'm using a three and three quarters, which is one of the longer blades that you can get for clippers like this. Not the longest, but one of them. And I'm just going to do, just like I do with the body, work with the, the direction the hair naturally goes. And I'm going to clip the entire leg first. And then after I'm done, I'll go back and neaten it with the scissors and or fitting shears. differ for everybody because they're all made different so if you're wanting to do this at home or start doing this as a profession you'll just have to get your hands on them and and feel them I like the ones with an offset shake see how they're not even because you want them to line up I don't know how to get that on camera you want them to line up completely straight with your arm when you're scissoring Okay, so I'm going to start with his face, and then I'll probably have to come back and do a part three for his legs, because I don't think I'll have time to get them all done. So, all I did was just comb his hair forward, what was left up there, just to clean it out from in front of his eyes. And then I'm taking the scissors and gently, slowly trimming in front of the eyes. Okay, so nothing hangs over into his little hands and eyeballs. Now I'm going to take my thinners, which as you can see have teeth, so they don't cut all the hair, they just cut little pieces of hair so it, it blends a lot easier than a, a regular scissor stroke. And I'm just going to thin right between his eyes. I'm going to adjust that camera a little bit because it's not Okay, there we go. Now, <laughs> like I said before, he does not get the normal Yorkie ear, which is tipped on the top portion. So what I do with his ear is I find the very top, which happens to be right there. I put my fingernail on it, and then I scissor that so I know where the top of his ear is. Okay, so then I bend it basically in half and anything that sticks out past where his ear should be I trim. See that? So that gives you when he pulls his ear up a nice starting point on how to round out his face there and for that mostly I use my my thinning shears or blenders they're also called and I'll hold his ear up because usually they don't want to hold that up for you while you're grooming it. So I hold it up where it would be normally when he's alert and happy. And I start blending around on that side to make it even with what I trimmed on the ear. That makes sense. And in the back. And then when I get kind of close to where I think I should be. I can let go of the ear and just see how it lays naturally. 
and neaten here and there, wherever needs it. You can also use the scissors for this, but I just like the thinners a little better because they give a more natural edge to it as opposed to a real blunt edge. And with the whiskers, I pull them straight forward. Did you just see how I did that? Straight forward, not out to the side, not out, you know, back over here, straight forward. I want that combed straight forward. Going off camera there. Straight forward, and then trim straight up. Still off camera. There you go. Anyway, that gives a nice, rounded, subtle edge there to the, the front of the face. Same thing over here, and remember about how much you cut off on the other side, because you want it to be even, obviously. Okay, there's that. Now, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do my ears first, and then do the bottom of the face. Because the ears give you a guideline to go by. And I do this, this folding thing, even with the regular tipped ear. If I tip the ear from this point up, um, I still fold it like this and I still scissor it uh, to an even edge. I'll probably show you that on another dog here in a little while. <clears throat> I have another dog coming later today and I'll videotape her as well. Anywho, same thing over here. You bend it. He's being ornery with me. He keeps turning his head right when I get it all up there. Scissor it straight up against where you think the ear should be. And that gives you a really nice little outline guideline thing to go by here. This side might be better for you to see on exactly what I did. Anyway, you can see how that's kind of coming together. Okay. Now, when you've got that somewhat near where you want it to be, you can always work on it a little bit later, but just to get your guideline down. I usually do use scissors for the bottom half just because it. I'll go back and thin it out a little bit later for looks, but just to get everything nice and even on the bottom, I usually do use the scissors. Okay. Then I will comb it all forward or down, actually a little bit of both, and then I'll go back with my thinners again. I'm very particular about faces because that's what stares at you. That's what the owners see the most and by golly they want it to be cute and I agree I think the face should be if, if you get anything right on a groom you should make the face look the best because that's what's the most important I usually just go back and forth between my scissors and my thinners to where I'm comfortable and then I let the dog shake, and usually there's more that I need to do that didn't show up before. There's always something else that you can cut off with a dog. There is no absolute perfection, except for in show dogs. But in the normal pet, there's usually a flyaway hair here, flyaway hair there. There's no perfection in it. And really, they don't hold still long enough for anybody to notice. So don't stress over it if you can't get it absolutely perfect. Okay. Look over here. Look. Look. Hey, Reno. So there's his face, basically, in a nutshell. Okay, I will be back with the rest of his legs.